Let me frame. Uh, my task is fairly easy, I guess. I've been knowing this person for, she says, 20 something years now. <laughs> but, um, but, uh, anyway, she's a lovely person. Mother of four kids. And I guess the most important thing is she's a child of God. Amen. Without further ado, I introduce some and present the other. My apple of my. <laughs> Uh, first, give an honor to God. He is the head of my life. I want to thank my, I call him my Mr. One, my husband for uh, introduction. I want to thank uh, Pastor Craig for letting me come. Amen. And then, ladies, I want to thank you all for asking me to come. Uh, and I noticed your thing is order my steps, but I would like to kind of finish that verse on our where it says, "Order my steps in your word, and let not any iniquity." We're talking about sin now. Any iniquity, sin, have dominion over me. My topic is going to be well dressed feet. <laughs> <laughs> I realize that this is Women's Day, so I don't want to leave you men out. You're going to hear me say it a couple times. I don't want to leave you out. So I have a scripture for you, too. The steps of a good man Amen. are ordered by the Lord, Amen. and he delighted in his wife. Psalms 37, 37, verse 23. Now, we'll kind of give you a, like we call it, pride knowledge in schools that tell us to kind of go over what you need to say first and then just go right on into it. So that's what I'm going to do. In Psalms 119, verse 113, if I go fast, I'm excited, okay? So just tell me to slow down. Okay? Slow down. <laughs> David talks about how he hates vain thoughts. Okay? He, he wasn't talking about other folks. He was talking about himself. He hates those vain thoughts to get in our head sometimes, that just get there sometimes. It, it, something might go wrong, and then you'd be thinking, oh, no, I wish you said I sure. Those thoughts. But he said, I don't hate the people. I don't hate the men. I hate it when it gets in me, when it gets in me. Now, every good man, woman, you have this thing called a conscience. Now, your conscience job is to tell you right from wrong. I don't care who you are, you have a conscience. And it tells you right from wrong. So you need to be aware of your conscience. You need to listen to your conscience because nine times out of ten, it is right. Again, David was talking about those vain thoughts, and he was saying that they're, they're sinful and they're hurtful. You know how sometimes people say things before they think about it, and once it comes out. I think it was in our Sunday school lesson, they was talking about the mouth says the thing, but what's in the heart is what comes out. That's what it is. It is what it is. I, I don't know any other way to say it, but it is what it is. Okay? So if it's in you, it's going to come out. So you have to remember. <laughs> it, it is. It's in you. Believe me. Those are those fake vain thoughts. Okay? So we got to kind of put a cap on those. You need to think before we speak. Think about it. Because it's hurtful. Once you say it, it's dangerous. You can't take it back. David didn't say that he was free from these vain thoughts. He said he didn't tolerate it. He wasn't going to put up with it. And he wasn't going to entertain it. So he said the only way I could keep from doing that is to think about the love of God and his laws. Now, if you're praying, you can't be thinking about anything negative. You do realize that, right? Okay. So if you're, if you're singing from your heart a song that's in your heart, you don't have time to think about those vain thoughts, those sinful things. You just don't have time for it. You don't have any room for it. So that's what he was saying. So he just decided that if I just think about the Lord, everything will be okay. And I won't have those thoughts to worry about. Now remember, our topic is well dressed feet. So your scripture you have today, you're, you're, and you're right here in front of it, says, order my steps. We're going to find out what kind of shoes you like to wear. Right. 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 When I was a child, I'm a tomboy. I've always been one. I still am. <laughs> My mother would always tell me, Carl, take care of your shoe. You only get three pairs. You have your sun shoe, you have your school shoe, and you have your play shoes. That's it. We didn't have a, what do you call this, a paid shoe store to go to when I was coming up. We had to wait until we had outgrown our shoes. Now, mind you, I have one sister. She's older than I am, but she wore size six 
I'm a big girl, I'm a 16. So there wasn't no hand-me-downs. No hand-me-downs. So I had to keep my shoes neat, clean, tight. My mother taught me how to, if I had on my little pad leather shoes, if I had a black scar on it, she told me to use fingernail polish remover or to use fingernail polish remover. It was something that she told me to use. Oh, alcohol. Put a little green alcohol and rub it on that. It shouldn't take most of that, that black scar off there. And then she said, shine it up with some Vaseline or some Crisco. And that's what I did. I took care of my shoes. Had those tennis shoes that I would play in and play in and play in. And they were always white. And I tried to keep them white. But there were times when I would get them dirty. <laughs> Just to be dirty. You know that uh, polish that comes in this little bottle that has a little sponge on top of it where you press down the water on it? That's what I used to keep them pretty. So I said, well, okay, they're ready for tomorrow. And the next day I would do the same thing over and over again. So she told me how to take care of your shoes. She said, oh, just, just take care of your shoes. I know you're going to mess them up, you're going to scratch them up. But if you would take care of them, you'll appreciate it longer. And as you get older, you'll appreciate it. You'll know how to do it, take care of your shoes. So I said, okay. I did. Now, when I was in school, I went to Stigall Elementary School. I don't know if anybody knows what Stigall Elementary School is in Pombo. But there was this merry-go-round out there. And when we had recess, I would go out there, and I'd get on that merry-go-round, and I'd run real hard, real fast, <laughs> one to serve, and I'd jump on it real quick, and I'd take my shoe and just drag, <laughs> just drag, just to see how much dust I could keep up. But didn't realize that, Carl, you're messing up the tips of your shoes, you're gonna have to fix that. And same thing with swing. I'd get on that swing and somebody pushed me, I'd go up high and I'm scared of height, didn't want to go too high. And I would drag my foot when I came down just a little bit, just to bring it down. So again, I was messing up my shoes. And she would say, Carl, I'm not buying you another pair of shoes. You're gonna have to take care of your shoes. Same thing with my tennis shoes. Told you about my tennis shoes and fingernail polish and all that. So ladies, Right now, if a young man was to walk through that door, most everybody's going to turn around. As he walks down, on his nice looking suit, and I'm some smell good, got his hair cut down, clean shade, he walks in, nice looking suit. But then when you look down at his feet, you see these dusty, <laughs> holy shoes, shoe strain, not tied, shoes, and it messes up the whole appearance of his suit, I don't care if he paid a thousand dollars for this suit. Our eyes are gonna look at his feet and it's all messed up. Things, so we, we, and then we say, hey, he ain't about nothing. He ain't got to to clean up his shoes down that nice little suit. You know how we talk? We, we, we do that like So let's just see how important our feet really are. Our feet take us places, and, and, and where we put our feet <coughs> determines what direction we're going in. What we wear on our spiritual feet is important too. How we walk and how we order our steps will impact on will impact on us and those will have an impact on us and those around us. So sometimes we have to be just a little more selective on what shoes we find ourselves. Wearing as a Christian. So what kind of shoes fit you? Let's talk about flat shoes. Do you find yourself sometimes in a flat situation where you need a little self-motivation? It's easy to find ourselves just being flat sometimes. But sometimes all we need to do is just energize ourselves and get to thinking about those things that the Lord has done for us and get excited about this Christian walk. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Psalms 51 and 12. Does anybody like loafers? I remember my mom buying me a pair of loafers. You know that little slot they have when you put that pin in? Instead of bring you good luck? <coughs> Do you find yourself not doing anything for Christ? Are you using your talent for his glory? Perhaps you've been burnt out and you just don't have time to participate in things like you used to. And is that some of those talents that you have, can you not use them, let's say, in Sunday school? Teach a Sunday school class. Um, feed the need. Or just mentor to another woman. Okay? We have to be active in order for the body of Christ to work effectively. 
For as the body is one, and has many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. 1 Corinthians 12 and 12. So let's talk about these pumps. I saw you had pumps on your phone. <laughs> some of them, I think y'all call them, some of us call them stilettos, you know, those higher heels that I'm from my pumps, okay? Do you find yourself pumping up people? <laughs> Encouraging them? These are great pair of shoes to wear, ladies. We need that. We, we need to pick each other up, ladies, and not tear each other down. I don't know why it's so hard for us to just help each other out. I don't know you. But if I saw you on the street and you flagged me down, I'd probably stop. Come over to you. So what's going on? What can I do for you? Even if I can't change the flat tire, I can't. I'm happy. I'm happy. We, we have to start building each other up and stop knocking each other down. Maybe. We have to. Work for comfort yourself together and edify one another, even as also you do. First Thessalonians 5 and 11. <laughs> Does anybody have any tennis shoes today? Anybody? Nobody? Oh, do you find yourself running from your problems? My love. <laughs> Things start happening and you be like, oh, okay, I'm done. And you just run from your problems. We're going to have to stop running from our problems. We're going to have to stand still, know that God is God, lean on Him. He's there to help you. If you just lean on Him, just lean on Him. So, Lord, just. Whatever's going on, I don't understand it. A lot of times the things in school be going on. I don't understand it. Sometimes I don't even want to understand it. Really, I, I don't want to understand it. But it happens. And I can't run from it. I've got to stay still, know that God is God. Lean on him. Lean on him. Nobody said this road would be nobody. Nobody. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not until your own understanding. And in all thy ways not to, and he shall direct your paths. Proverbs 3, 5, and verse 6. Now, last week the weather was a little different. It was kind of cold some mornings I got up, and I was like, it's time to put on some boots. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you, you, we wear our boots. But, but do you find yourself walking over on folks? <laughs> Just not being considerate of their feelings? And we just walk all over, put on those boots, pull them up, and just, and not think about the other person's feelings. We've got to stop. But we've got to stop. We've got to be more considerate and sensitive to others. We have to be. I think if we be just a little more loving and tender hearted, we tend to stop walking this way. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted. Forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Ephesians 4 and 32. Slip on it. Those shoes, you know, you just slip them up. <laughs> Do you find yourself slipping on Christianity just for church certain days of the week? <laughs> you know, on Sunday, we all holy, 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 man. <laughs> You preaching now. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then just as soon as you walk outside, hit those steps. How to cut somebody out. <laughs> if we do it, are you you saw Sister Sally? I hope there's no Miss Sally standing <laughs> See Miss Sally, she's got on this purple suit, and you looking at her like, why in the world does she wear that purple suit? <laughs> Today we're supposed to have a black and white and <laughs> shoes not matching and we do it. We do it. We've got to stop. We've got to stop slipping in his shoes and taking those kind of walks. I guess it's best way to say it. If we are living for Christ throughout the week, then how can you witness for him anytime? 